Haskell is covered with myths and stereotypes. For instance, there is this idea that there is some sort of tooling issue, or well, maybe it was true back in the day. But anyways, I want to show you the current state of things and some tooling that other languages can only dream about. And of course, there are issues here and there, but we are all software engineers and we know how it is. We are going to cover the following installation tools, build tools, IDE and a language server, and a tool that is a cherry on the top. And note that we're not going to talk about Nix. Today's standard is to install GHC app, then use it to install the compiler, the build tools, and the language server. Afterwards, you install VS Code with a Haskell extension or any of your favorite editors, and you are ready. And this is exactly what we're going to do. Not that I'm super lazy. This is almost exactly the setup that I'm using. The only thing I ever do is install a new font and I'm good to go. But you can personally take it way further than that. As I mentioned, we can get all we need with one single tool, GHC app. It manages the main Haskell tools, GHC, Cabal, Stack, and HLS. And we don't need to install or manage any of this by hand. After you install GHC app for the first time, you should have a working Haskell tooling on your machine. So let's try to do this. You can use the command line interface to upgrade or update the tools. For example, we can install the recommended version of the language server, which is called HLS. I already have the recommended HLS 1.9 version installed, so nothing happening. Uh, but we can also use the text-based user interface, which is quite nice. As you can see, I have multiple HLS version already installed. Um, latest one, recommended one, some useless one in the past, which is also easy to remove just with a click um, and it's gone. And also you can see the other tools and versions I have installed. And, and as you can see, I already have multiple GHC versions, uh, one for the new project and one for the old project. And it's quite seamless to switch between both and I don't even worry about it. There are two main build tools in Haskell, Stack and Cabal. Their popularity keeps shifting back and forth and their functionality keeps converging. So if you're just starting out, you can use either one. One difference is that Stack uses a curated list of packages by default, while you have to explicitly configure it in Cabal. Package is a community project that curates these sets and bundles the dependency known to build together, which avoids any version conflict problems which is very appealing, especially if you have ever experienced class not found exception at runtime or had to shovel yourself out of the conflict in Java dependencies in Java or something along these lines. And PureScript also has a similar project, which is called Registry. Because I'm lazy and I want to illustrate stuff really quickly, I'll just show you stack. We can initialize and start the project pretty quickly. For example, let's create one which is called tooling test, then go into it and run it. I'm going to run it silently because I don't want you to see my weird directories and my namings, but it should print some funk and you can imagine that it prints hello world. But this is not fun. Let's try to open and change the code. We only need HLS, which we already have after installing GHC app and VS code with a couple of extensions, one main extension for Haskell and the additional one for the highlighting. And it doesn't have to be VS code. You can use any of your favorite editors with HLS. HLS provides go to definition, auto completion, and all the other stuff. But let's find the main file and go from there. From here, we can jump to the definition of the function. Let's change this to print something else. For example, a number. Uh, we can use autocomplete, as you can see. And it gives us a warning because we use 42 without specifying a type. But it's not important. Let's try to print some stuff. I'll open a terminal here because I'm too lazy to switch. And we'll just run it. And yeah, we got 42 as expected, which is not fun. I just wanted to show you the auto completion stuff. But let's add a dependency. For example, let's add ISON, which is a library for working with JSON. We do this by going to the YAML file and just adding it. We just need to extend the dependency list in the package YAML. Now we rebuild the project. As you can see, we don't need to worry about the library version. The resolver handles the versions for us. 
it chooses a specific stackage snapshot. We can see it in the stack YAML. Right here, it shows that our version LTS 2011, we can check all the versions if we need, but um, let's go back. The cool part is if we want to add and use another library, which is also an ISO dependencies, something like text. We know that the versions that we're gonna use in our project and the version that ISO uses are gonna be compatible and we don't have to worry about this stuff. Let's go back to the leap and use what we added. As an illustration, we can use the library to encode a list as a JSON and we can uh, make use of auto imports again. Um, encode and then we add a list of obviously something like hello world and that's it. And, and now we run it again with stack run and it's there, hello world. Have you ever forgotten a name of a function? Or how long have you spent scrolling through all the autocomplete suggestions looking for a perfect function? Or how often do you have to jump through the different libraries looking for that perfect function or for that function that you know was somewhere but you kind of forget where it was? What if there were type of search engines that you can ask? Well, we have this tool in Haskell and it's called Google. We can use it to search Haskell libraries by name and type signature. And we also have such a tool in PureScript, which is called Pursuit, but let's go back to Google. And if you're ready, let's do a couple of searches. You know, sometimes I have to use a function to add a value between the elements of the list. For example, add a comma between the list of words. But I struggle to remember its name. It's either intersperse or intercalate or inter whatever. I can use Google to search for it. I just start with the prefix. It shows the type signatures and the docs, and I can see, okay, first intercalate, but it's a bit different. It takes a list of strings and then intercalates them together. I was thinking about maybe intersperse, and this one is already takes a string and adds a comma for it, which is kind of cool, nothing crazy. It's as impressive as autocomplete is, but we can also search for types right away. Okay, let's start from scratch. What do we need from this function? We need to pass an element, a list, and the types of this element and the list element should be the same. And the result should be a new list of the same elements. And as you can see, it's right there on the top. And as it shows, we can also use a simpler types. We don't have to go all crazy with fancy names. And it's right here again. The results didn't change. Okay, let's imagine something else. Imagine that we are looking for functions that checks if the element exists in the list. So once again, we have an element, a list, and this time the result should be a bool. Here we are, two results, the lm function and it's evil twin or it's negative twin, not lm. Uh, note that we used a polymorphic type A because we wanted a function that works for any list, uh, for strings, for integers, whatever. But if we specialize and add more specific types like int, it's gonna suggest first more specific types, but then at the end it's gonna suggest more generic types like lm and not lm once again. And it's pretty cool. It, it works for the whole stackage set or even beyond it, as you can see. We can use it whenever we are stuck looking for a suitable function. And if this isn't cool, then I don't know what is. Note that you can also install the hooker locally. You can run the searches on a command line or in browser and even hook it up to your editor. So yeah, I don't think there is any tooling issues. In Haskell, you install one tool and one editor and you're good to go. You get auto completion, go to definitions, auto imports and all this stuff. And the tools keeps improving daily and I'm not even sure if this video is gonna age well. I just wanna thank everybody working on the tooling because I think you are the real heroes here.